What's going on, y'all? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. This week on the Ancestry Anthology, I rolled for it because everybody wants to see all the things. We landed on the Gorin. If you're liking what you're seeing, like, subscribe, ding the bell. Stay caught up on all your stuff for now. Let's dive in. Hockey dokey. So we of course talked about the Gorin and Wunny. You can follow this card right up here if you'd like to catch up, but this time it's a little more to compare and contrast because this ancestry is unique to Paizo and has a lot more going on for it than like an Ifrit. So I feel like we still need to talk about them, right? Short version, a long, long time ago, there were two very powerful spellcasters who were very, very mad at one another. And then second edition dropped and wizards got an overall nerf and everything was fixed. Hooray! Turns out when a lot of very powerful wizards are very angry at one another, it can do some no good, very bad things to the land. And when you need to feed your people on that land, well, science has to find a way, right? That most powerfulest of archmages, Nex, asked a renegade druid by the name of Goris to create a plant that would feed the people of Nex. And so they did. They developed a flower that would adapt to any environment and withstand every sort of magic. Unfortunately, that flower also developed sentience and then Soiling Green was people and here we are. Because people would still eat the sentient thing, over time Gorons grew into a humanoid shape. Eventually that worked. Uh, eventually, I feel like somewhere in the timeline between 1st edition and 2nd edition, or at least they don't talk about it in 1A lore to my knowledge, Gorons won citizenship and protected status in their homeland. So then green, no longer food. Thing about Gorons is Gorons grow a seed every 20 years or so within their body. Their old body withers away, their soul goes inside the seed. If that seed is planted, it produces a new body. So theoretically, Gorons are immortal, so long as someone's there to water them and make sure the cat doesn't eat them. I don't know if the cats care about the ethics of eating sentience. Let me ask Achilles. I'll get back to y'all on that one. This is a stark contrast to how androids work. Follow this card right up here, the short version. An android's body gets a new soul in it and cycles through multiple souls over and over, whereas a Goran's, whereas a Goran's soul gets many, many bodies. Unfortunately, Gorans do not know how to create more of the seeds that knowledge died with the druid. Additionally, this video is going to be a little longer. Gorons are so goddamn unique and they had like next to no lore. The last time I saw them, I want to know what exists now and I want to talk about what exists now. This is like what I made the channel for. That thing that was in the back of the book is no longer in the back of the book, so we're going in. Gorons are about humanoid in size and shape. Their body's made up of a fibrous plant, something like a woody vine with a face like an enormous colorful flower. I think asparagus when I look at them TBH. But I suppose that doesn't matter because Gorons have a great deal of control over the shape and structure of themselves in a a few hours they might become taller, shorter, barrel chested, longer limbed. They can of course learn emotions and how to emote them, but they're plants. They use an entirely different set of emotional signifiers, which is, you know, the uncanny valley and like one fourth of all tabletop role playing games. Most cities in Nex have a little enclave somewhere where Gorons live. Typically, this is among trees within like big parks and stuff, such that like if you're a non Goran and you go in a Goran neighborhood or even a Goran's home, you might not know until suddenly you're in somebody's living room and you're not supposed to be. Outside of cities, think small remote communities, these often being much more isolationist because you're not interacting with other beings who are like, yeah, no, okay, we're not gonna eat. It's cool, don't worry, therefore sticking to old beliefs. There's an analogy there about growing up in small towns where you're not exposed to much, as opposed to growing up in big cities where you definitely are. Interesting. But mechanically, Gorons have eight hit points. They are medium creatures with a speed of 25 feet, ability boosts to constitution with one freebie, and no drawbacks. Really seeing a theme here, I don't think any of the Impossible Lands ancestries have a drawback. I, I could be wrong, but we'll see. They begin play speaking common and sylvan, plus extra languages. They have low light, vision, and photosynthesis. Meaning they don't need to eat or drink, but, you know, sun important, or bottled sun important. Y'all have been playing Mushies, right? For our heritages, the ancient Ashgorn, one who remembers all of their past lives, becomes trained in one skill of your choice, which goes to expert at fifth. The enchanting Lily, who smells so sweet, 
is trained in diplomacy and gets a plus one circumstance bonus to make an impression against things that can smell. Combo this with a sweet breath duel and it's, you're, you're really just hitting them in the nose real hard. Anybody who's sensitive to scents, I, oh, sorry about it. The strong oak gains a plus two circumstance bonus on their fort or reflex DC against grapples and trips and to saving throws against effects that would grab you, restrain you, or knock you prone. So like a wide swath of spells. Also a plus two circumstance bonus on acrobatics to balance, you know, if you needed it. And the thorned rose gains the wicked thorns reaction, just like every night as it's dawn, I, I guess. Uh, when you hit with an unarmed strike or with a non-reach melee weapon, your thorns break off and hook into your attacker's body, which deal a d8 of piercing damage. On a basic reflex save against class or spell DC, critical failures, this does 1d4 persistent bleed. At third in every two, this ticks up by 1d8. You can do this once per day. To the feats! Ancient memories at level one during daily preparations, you can become trained in one skill of your choice. These are like secretly one of my favorite things. I'm playing an investigator over at Recall Knowledge right now and I've, I've loved just, I need a random lore. What's lore the plot today? Explosives lore? Legal lore? Airship lore, I think is what I'm using on two days ago because this comes out on a Friday. Flexible forum gets you trained in acrobatics. You can't be a strong oak, oak not flexible. If you roll to squeeze, you get a critical success instead. If you would automatically get trained, you get a free thing, of course. Goran lore gets you trained in arcana and nature. Hot take, I think that ought to have been arcana and society, cause you know, like history of a land and a lot of integrating in the culture around you. And of course, other things as well, if you already got these and Goran lore as well, because well, Goran lore. Goran weapon familiarity gets you trained in some, <laughs> of uncomfy weapons. The Glaive and Great Club, I feel like are style choices. I guess the Great Club is just a big fuck off stick, but like Hatchet, Scythe, and Sickle are <laughs> mm, trained in the tools once to use to harvest ya, huh? Interesting. This also gets you access to all uncommon Goran weapons, of which there is one. I'm gonna call it Rose Whip because I really like Yu Yu Hakusho and you can't stop me. The Thorn Whip, ah oh, shit, I stopped me, fuck. Does 1d4 piercing damage, it's one-handed. It's a martial weapon with disarm, finesse, reach, trip, Goran, and uncommon. So like, you don't have to be a druid. You don't have to like seed that weapon out. Hidden Thorns gives you a Thorns unarmed attack that does a d6 of piercing damage in the knife weapon group with the finesse and unarmed traits. If you were like, well, I want to play a Shisk, but I want to not eat food. Goran weapon practice gets you every fifth level weapon thing. Y'all know what this does by now, right? Right? Is this literally your first experience with Pathfinder 2e? Shit, I'm sorry. That was up long enough, you read it. Murderous thorns. Your thorns are many, vicious, and sharp. Your 2004 poetry is <laughs> all of those things. If you have the hidden thorns feet, your thorns get deadly d6 and the thorn grows heritage lets you use wicked thorns once every hour. This feels almost staple. I don't know, I, I really like the reaction damage heritages, just like a lot. Speak with flowers. Hey, what do you think this does? No, really? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, you said it that way. That that makes more sense. Yeah, right, cool. Thanks for clearing that up for me. I couldn't tell what Speak With Flowers, the feat that says Speak With Flowers does. Trees Ward lets you cast Protector Tree as a primal innate spell once per day. Endless Memories, it gets you trained in a thing and also expert in a thing. And when both of these expire, you can retrain one of your skill increases in case you just really liked that other one and wanted to hold on to it. It's real good. Flower magic lets you cast bark skin and tree shape as second level arcane innates once per day. A tree shape turns you into a large flowering plant like a rose bush or a lilac bush or something from fucking Morrowind probably. Well, that was mostly mushrooms. Where has big flowers? In the comments, tell me, where big flowers? Perfume cloud for two actions. This is really interesting, actually. There's a Gorin ninja archetype type in 1e. It's flower themed as opposed to being like perfumey themed, but it's very, very similar. And I've seen it at my tables like more than twice because everybody's drawn to the things it does. And then putting this in on the ancestry feet so everybody can have it moving forward. It's a nice touch. I appreciate it. You sneeze perfume. Plants and fungi are immune, but everybody else in a 10 foot emanation. Fort saves against your class or spell DC. They're either dazzled for a round, dazzled and can see only 10 feet away for one round, or blinded for a round, depending on how shitty their fort save is. Once per hour is pretty good. Never underestimate oops all flat checks, or even like oops can't shoot the wizard, oops can't see the Atari AI, or blinded is. Mm -mm, it's rude. Solar rejuvenation. Did you play a leshy? Play a leshy. If you rest outdoors for 10 minutes during the day, you gain hit points equal to your con, times half your level. 
on top of having your wounds treated. Eternal memories for one action once per day. You screw with all of the other ancestry beats and get trained in other things. It's, it's good shit. Goran weapon expertise. It does the same thing the 13th level weapon feats does. Make better at hit with Rose Whip. Look but don't touch. So make sure that you've seen it and that you've seen it enough. I don't think anyone's gonna get that joke. For two actions and one minute, any creature that touches you or damages you with a melee weapon without the reach trait or with a melee and armed attack takes 3d6 poison damage. And then they get a thorn stuck in them. And then other things that happen when you get punched as well. The Gorons like scream build around me. That was really cool. Violent Vines lets you cast Murderous Vines. That's... You can't look at the name of this feat and know instinctively what it does. This is bullshit. Once per hour, primal innate. Goran's Wrath lets you cast Nature's Reprisal. Once per hour is primal innate. And yeah, so lots of interesting changes to this one. The first of which, in first edition, the Goran Seed was a full round action. You could just oopsie out your seed, and then 2d6 later, you would grow into a healthy copy of yourself. Once the Goran oopsied their seed, they got a negative level, and then that Goran died when the other Goran came out. I knew a lot of people who played like Rapanathuk and would play a Goran just to plant their seed and then come back again. It's interesting to me that there's not an ancestry feat that interacts with this, but I suppose there's a narrative ability that does, and that's also good. Of course, this takes a couple of months to do, and like if you were a Goran fighter, I... Well, I guess the seed would make literally same thing, right? I guess. I don't know how plant work. But it is a much longer cooldown free resurrection if you just really 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 need it if like whatever it is you're going up against can still be handled in 30 to 60 days in first edition and as i understand it in second edition as well in the back of a lot of adventure paths there's a like what if the bad guys win bit so you can like continue the campaign of the tpk this is a really interesting way to make that happen especially in parties that like might not have access to folks who can res them in house you know and this happens in a way that's much less mechanically abusable though like an ancestry feat to have made it a little more mechanically abusable by like 17th or something i think could have been a really nice touch additionally gorons had a couple of big drawbacks in 1e one of them being if they just weren't exposed to sunlight they took a bunch of con damage which meant you couldn't play them in a lot of games but speaking of food in 1e gorons took a minus two on escape artists and combat maneuver checks to escape grapples against creatures that would bite them because you know they're real fucking yummy which is a weird weakness that never comes up really but it's an interesting change going into second edition because i think like that presumed everybody thought goran were delicious and i guess that makes sense if you're a powerful wizard i mean druid caster man who's trying to grow perfect superfood but i guess like for strict carnivores who are usually the creatures who are biting and grabbing it doesn't make as much sense for them to like to eat plants anyway around it the gorn the gripply the shisk i think those are my three calling a now favorite ancestries of Tui, and it's entirely because of that interesting reaction that can cause damage and just like screams build around me Particularly because, like, in the case of the Goran, I assume you still have literal thorns jutting out of your fucking arms and shit when they stick into people. So, like, folks who don't know what a Goran is, it's got the rare tag, many folks may not, are probably gonna not wanna hit you after they do that. And there are thorns the size of, like, a human's thumb stuck in their neck about it. To say nothing of, like, animal-level intelligence things, it's a really interesting, nope, mm -mm, don't eat me, nope, mm -mm, don't attack me, attack the guy with the shield. Please, this is how we set up a party dynamic. I'm I'm just a humble rogue. Plus, leave me be. I also really like that like they have a con boost because they were made to survive the fucking mana wastes. It it's a really interesting intersection. They're also like the only ancestry who would have a lot of memories of a very very long time ago without like a lot of magic going on like you could go fix an automaton's head and that would probably be helpful but like other than losing distant memories you'd think like a goran could reach back to the height of the war and they might not remember every detail but they would remember a lot of details it's honestly i almost prefer the goran as an npc than as a pc just so you can be like, hey, tell me all the things you know. You don't have to roll for knowledge. You know what the GM knows, and you have the possibility to know just so damn much. But that's all the time I have for this one. What do y'all think? Are we running them? Are we playing them? Let me know down in the comments. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. We'll see you next time.